Hey everybody, it's Zach here, and I wanted to do a video on my truck. Um, as you guys know, I've had this truck now for over a year. Um, let's see, July, August, September, October. So a year and four months. And uh, within just that year's worth of time, I put on over 20,000 miles. I didn't think I would drive that much. <clears throat> but uh, going from a leased car to a owned pickup truck is quite a quite a big difference <laughs> so you put on a lot of miles I guess uh, just because I think it's better for obviously hunting and fishing and stuff so I'm able to get out a little more but regardless I thought I would do a review on it because I kind of mentioned doing a video like this and there was some people who seemed interested so um, let me pop the hood and we'll go <clears throat> go over it what I think about it, stuff like that. So we'll start in the, in the front and work our way back as organized as we possibly can. <clears throat> so first of all, this is a 2013 GMC Sierra. Ugh, and it has the Vortec motor, a 5.3. Uh, really decent gas mileage. I think going up north and stuff, I'll get between 17 and 20 21 miles per gallon and uh, it's it's really nice it's a very comfortable ride you just see here um, I do have some this is just part of the wiring I have for the uh, rear bed lights that I installed I'll show you guys that one thing I'd like to say <clears throat> is I really like the front end of this truck um, some people don't like chrome I think chrome looks nice and uh, this front end sticks out I think it's one of the nicer front ends that they've had. Uh, and the hood has nice lines to it. I'm not super thrilled now about the bubbly sides, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm going to own this thing and drive it into the ground because they're... Trucks are expensive. <laughs> so, yep, has the 5.3. And this, I believe, is the last year of this, this type of door. Um, it's like a suicide door. But the nice part about it is it goes all the way. Not only is this really uh, nice for um, loading stuff in if you're in like a parking lot, but it's nice when you're out in the woods because duck cutting, for example, there's a little bit of a walkway here in the woods, right, where I was parked. And when I was unloading and reloading all my stuff in, having that door flipped all the way around made it really easy. You didn't have to walk around into the into the weeds or whatever. You just walked right up and put your stuff in there. Uh, so it works really, really nice on certain occasions, of course. Uh, also, if you're ice fishing, um, this makes a really nice spot to take a whiz. It's nice and it's secluded. <laughs> but that's only... If you're going ice fishing so yeah I really like these doors they're they're well well thought of like that uh, so the back seat isn't exactly roomy by any means but you got to think of the fact that 95% uh, of the time it's just me in here and the other 5% of the time it's me and Sam and of that maybe 1% of the time I'll have a guest so in the meantime, whoever it is, they can deal with the back here, or we can move around and take turns in the back seat. But it's uh, not exactly a crew cab, right? But it does work well, and the seats do come up, so you can have just the the bottom part there. I did think of of making a board with some feet that would sit in there, and then I'd flip the seat up all the time, but um, never got around to it. So I like the cloth. Um, I've had leather. I've had vinyl. And I've had cloth, and I like cloth the most because it just seems a little, um, just seems a little more forgiving. Leather always t seems to rip or has blemishes. And uh, another thing with cloth seats is you can put on seat covers, and they'll actually get grip. I've had seat covers on vinyl seats and leather seats, and they never ever seem to really stick that well, like they do with cloth seats. I also have a, a steering wheel cover that Sam got me for my birthday last year, so it's been a year and a few months. It's holding up great. Uh, but 
This is kind of your instrument cluster. Down here, this is my bed lights. I'll turn those on for you. It comes with trailer brakes. I think that's an option. Uh, this truck here, the specs for it, I can show you guys. Oh yeah, it also has a hidden compartment that's lockable in the bottom here. Um, so here is the window sticker for it. And this thing was set up to haul, uh, from what I can read on this. It's kind of hard to open this one-handed because it's sticky. All right. There we go. So the specifications here are, this is the power tech package. So heavy duty cooling, uh, dual zone air conditioning, which is actually really nice because Sam likes it a little warmer. Um, trying to see here, trailering package, locking rear diff, the six speed transmission, uh, the active fuel management, I don't really like. Um, trying to see here. Yeah, and, and my hitch or whatever. But out the door, this vehicle was $39,000. Who knows what kind of deal they had. But the things I really, really like about it. Um, oh, yeah, and this does say it has the 4.8 liter motor. But then it says right here that it's the 5.3 with the power tech. So, yeah. And the standard was thirty five grand. After all the options was thirty nine grand. Who knows what kind of deal they had. But the couple things that I really, really like about this truck is the backup camera. It's not in the center, but it, it's really convenient to have it in the rear view mirror because you can uh, conveniently look out your back mirror. And that backup camera is perfectly aimed also at the hitch. So whenever I'm backing up to a trailer, I don't even need people, you know, left, right, whatever. Um, I can see it through the backup camera, which is very, very nice option to have um, like I said the dual climate I personally am a fan of just having the turn dials but this works fine uh, just a simple easy to use radio um, I'm not really about that lavish type life I mean uh, it needs a radio right because I like listening to music but that's about it <laughs> I don't need a big touch screen as of yet um, your information your dome light your fog lights the trailer package which it came with the as an extra um, and then your steering wheel controls also but it has pretty minimalistic type stuff inside here and that's what I really like about it is it's not lavish this is just a truck and it gets treated like a truck it's not a you know Cadillac if you will so there's one other thing I want to show you on the other side of the cab real quick that I thought was really cool who knows what Sam has in it. I think I probably know. She probably has some stuff in there. Oh yeah, and it has a ton of cup holders. Three cup holders in the middle, two on each door, and I think the back might have cup holders in the, and a flip down. Yep, and the back has two cup holders right here. So a ton of cup holders, but obviously you have your glove box, but then also, this is a little secret hidden compartment that Sam likes to keep her stuff in. So. If we go on road trips, she ends up putting like donuts in there or candy or, or whatever. She's that's her little snack bin. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, so that's kind of the last thing there. I got these little cab or box, what do they call these things? Box holes, if you will, um, covers. And I also got caps for the frame right there and right there because. Otherwise, a lot of dirt and debris gets in there. Um, when I bought this truck, I got it with a auto armor package. So at any point in time, I can bring it in and they'll fully detail it. That's for seven years. Uh, so they'll fully detail it if I bring it in. And then they will reapply uh, the, uh, what do they call that, uh, coating that they put over the frame rails or the undercoating there it is the undercoating um, and, and then it gets a special treatment on the paint inside the doors stuff like that now when I bought this truck it didn't have any rust well it must have been hiding because now just this wheel well in particular has all these bubbles the back side of it feels really good though like it's not all rotten on the back side so I don't know I gotta call that 
place with the auto armor and see if they cover such things like that. I know they cover some paint defects, but I don't know if they'd cover, you know, that's kind of a different category, if you will, this rust. So we'll see. I'm not getting my hopes up too high. But at the end of the day, like I said, this is a truck. It has 106,000 miles on it, 105,000 miles on it, and it really doesn't bother me. It's an eyesore, but like I said, I'm going to drive this thing into the ground. So if that means putting on a different box in 10 years, well, let it be, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, you know, I could get the wheel well covers, but that, those really don't interest me that much. I think it kind of looks dumb when it's these big fender flares with standard tires. And I don't plan on doing anything with the tires either. So ultimately... I'll just let it rot if I have to. Uh, so the the box of this truck is awesome because it's a six and a half foot box. If you've ever had a short bed, you'll know that it's kind of uh, kind of sucks. And then if you've had a long box, you know the usability of it. <gasps> like the hiccups. Um, but having this medium, you know, middle of the road size bed, six and a half feet is about the most convenient size you can get. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I would always choose the extended cab just to have a six and a half foot box. And it's just it's just better that way. Locking tailgate. And this is like the easy down tailgate so you can kinda, there's like bushings that help it slowly go down. And they're just, it's just these little polyurethane type bushings in here as far as I'm concerned. There might be a spring in there but <clears throat> it really depends on the weather whether it's gonna slam or not. So back here. I got those bed lights on They're pretty simple. I just did they just have an adhesive on there, and I did a very non Destructive approach. I just ran them through a, um, a little corner in the box. I think on the Yeah on this side or on the other side, but I ran it over here and then from the box they run just underneath into this door jam just up from the bottom along the edge which it never ever really stays in there very good um, over here and then it goes up into the switch and then from the switch it goes just very non-invasive I didn't want to drill holes I didn't want to do anything like that because well I'm really not that kind of guy <laughs> I guess I don't have an eye for detail so it doesn't have a bed liner and actually when I got it this thing was very clean like it had very little scratches in it and over the past year I've put some scratches all over in here and I think a line X type cover would be like a spray on bed liner would be really nice in here wrap it up over the top because the top now is from me doing me the top has a lot of dents in it and stuff but you know getting the truck there's not really much more I can say about the bed. It has four tie-down points, which I think is pretty standard. Um, keep this 2x4 in there so that I don't have to dig real far back. And I keep that garden hoe in there so that if I do dig way back there, I don't have to crawl up in there. Because that is a pain. Ugh. Do that again. So, to wrap this up, I guess... Um, Yeah, so I really do like this truck. It, it runs relatively good. It is a used truck and it has 100,000 miles on it. So it's nowhere near perfect. It makes some weird noises and and uh, sometimes the shift patterns are a little goofy on it. Uh, but you know what? I have a friend who drives a Chevy 1500. Uh, I think his is like a 2015, so it's the newer body style. And he says his does the same thing. He says sometimes it just doesn't know what it wants to do shift shift pattern wise. Who knows? There's a lot of technology put into these trucks. One thing I will say is I never plan on putting uh, bigger wheels on it or or uh, chain lifting it or um, or anything like that. Even doing a leveling kit, I'm I'm pretty uh, comfortable with this truck the way it is and. Uh, one thing that you pay for with these pickup trucks is that their technology factor, it probably doesn't look like a lot, but <clears throat> if this thing says that it'll, I think the rating for it is like a little over 10,000 pounds that you could tow 
on it. Um, you know, if you put 8,000 pounds behind this thing, this, the the uh, back being higher than the front, the rake, if you will, it, it does um, squat. So there is a lot of technology that goes behind the fact that these trucks are made to haul um, 1,300 pounds in the bed of it, and it, it'll ride, it'll squat, and it'll squat both front and rear, and it'll ride very nicely with that. So I try to keep it stock as possible. <clears throat> I sometimes think, oh, I should put like rims on it, and then I go look, and the rims are 200 bucks a piece, so it's really not, uh, it's not worth it for me. I view this thing as strictly utilitarian, so, uh, you know, it's made to go out in the woods, and it's also made to cruise. It's very comfortable for that, but I do view it as a very utility-type vehicle. Um, kind of a side note, these are general grabber tires, and they are pretty good. This is just kind of, I think, more of a highway pattern. My next tires are going to be general grabber AT2s, a set of four of them for this truck is under $700 delivered to my door. It was like $650 or something like that. And these general grabbers have given me good service life. You know, like I said, I put 20,000 miles on them and uh, I haven't had an issue at all. They ride real nice. They're not too uh, too loud by any means. They're not loud at all. And these are some pretty light tires. I think they're standard ply, so that's like a two-ply tire. But everything that I try to to do is based off of the 95 percent right so yeah i could get uh four or uh well, let's see i could get six or eight ply tires you know and haul the world but <clears throat> maybe if i got a camper i'd reconsider but as of right now the tires i'm getting are <clears throat> i think they're also a standard ply because 95 percent of the time i don't even haul much you know i'd say about maybe 80% of the time I'm just driving it like it is, you know. The other 20% of the time I'm hauling or going off-road with it. <clears throat> so I don't need a relatively a super aggressive tire, but I would like something that would maybe handle a little better um, uh, off-road and in the snow. So that AT2 is just a mildly aggressive highway slash off-road tire, <clears throat> and I think it looks very nice. So... Anyways, that's kind of the overview, a long video on this truck, but I proposed it a little while ago and some people seemed interested. So if you were looking at a truck, I like the new ones a little better because they have better body lines, but they also have the step in the uh, bumper, which is very handy. But, uh, but I would not be afraid to hop in this truck and go anywhere. And I'm hoping, I've seen some other videos online of, of Chevy and GM products I'm hoping that I can get three, four hundred thousand miles out of this thing. Uh, you know, I don't drive it like a race car, I just drive it normal, so hopefully I can get good life out of it. But yeah, that's about all guys. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.